Good morning, kindergarten. Today is Friday. Friday fun. I'm so excited about Friday fun. I've already put the latest number up for today. It's a three for April 3rd. And this is a thermometer. Huh. So, so far we have a watch, a scale, and a thermometer. I think we need a couple more days to decide what all these things have in common. All right, let's start calendar today. Today is Friday, Friday fun, April 3rd, the year 2020. First comes Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, in Espanol. Domingo, lunes, martes, mercoles, jueves, viernes, sabado. Domingo, lunes, martes, mercoles, jueves, viernes, sabado. Rocket ships, engage. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off! Rocket ships re-engage. Look at everybody engaging so nicely. Very great. All right. Here we go, counters up, exercise, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. June, great work. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Sloan, keep tapping, you're doing awesome. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Because I have so much to talk about today, we can only go to 50. I promise next week, 100. Here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Um, today, Boone has asked if he couldn't do a couple of the numbers because he's here every day and right now he's fiddling with something. Uh, 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 uh. Look up here, please. All right. The first number, Boone. What is it? Boom, what's this number? Oh, he's not being very helpful. Okay, 14. Round of applause. <gasps> Wonderful. Mila, can you please tell me what this number is? You're right, 23. Round of applause. Lottie, what about you? Hmm. 47. You're right, Lottie. Round of applause. All right. I think we'll stop there because we have so much to do. Boys, I'll make sure you get double next week. But Boone is a boy, so he counts for a little something. All right. The next thing we have to do is we have to spin the spinner. Are you ready? <gasps> Let's see. It's a line. So on the sheet right here, I'm going to color the dog in brown. I haven't 
colored it yet. And it's a dog. Boone, you won today. So exciting. All right, so then I need to put a dog marker in. Remember what the dog marker looked like? Put the dog marker in down here. Two dogs, I mean two cats, one dog. We have one more cat than we do dogs. All right, the next thing we have is our weather. Well, I'm looking out the window. Everybody sing while I look out the window. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather out today? What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather out today? I told you, I see rain today. So let's find rainy. There's cloudy, sunny, rainy right there. So we've had one of each of these today and none of these. So we don't really have a winner yet that's starting to pull ahead. We've had it even Steven, except for these three. It's a rainy day, it's a rainy day, it's a rainy, rainy day. It's a rainy day, it's a rainy day, it's a rainy, rainy day. Well, I have some exciting news today. Tomorrow, the eggs arrive to put in our incubator. Mrs. Gustafson brought the incubator home, and I'm going to show it to you today, and then I'm going to read a little bit about another book about chickens. Um, are you ready to see the incubator? We're getting the eggs from a farm around here, so it's going to be quite exciting. All right, first of all, they gave me directions. Now, Mrs. Gustafson has been teaching a long time, and we've been doing this exercise for a long time with doing uh, life cycles and putting incubators together. But I always read the directions, even though I think I know what I'm doing, because maybe I'll forget. So I'll read those directions when it comes to putting the water in it and the other things in it. So I'm going to show you everything that this incubator has. This is the lid for the incubator. And it plugs into the wall, and it takes electricity. This part right here is the motor. And that motor is a heater. It keeps it warm in the incubator. Does anyone know why we might need to keep the eggs warm? Oscar knows. Because the mother hen usually sits on the eggs to keep them warm. Well, there's no mother hen here, so we need to use an incubator to keep the hen to keep the eggs warm. Now, this right here is a thermometer. It tells us the temperature and it tells us the humidity. And so we can see both. It says control center it talks about all, I mean, it tells us all the things that we need to know. Okay, so that's the lid. Inside the lid, now Boone is right here and he's trying to look at all of it. We have, not inside the lid, inside the base. We have an egg turner because we don't have that hen. So we have to have something that's like the mommy that would get up and turn the eggs. That's what makes healthy eggs is, and healthy chicks is to have the eggs turned. So we have an egg turn. Also, we have a grate. I'll show you the grate. Because when the eggs get closer to being hatched, we're going to take that egg turner out and we're going to put the eggs right on this metal. It's kind of like a metal grate. We're going to put the eggs right on here because if the, egg, the chicks hatch, we can't have them in the egg turner because the egg turner will keep turning and it could hurt the baby chicks once they hatch. So we have to take that out as it gets closer. We also have a water tray. This is a tray and I put water in it. Um, the incubator has to not only be warm, it has to have um, humidity. Humidity is how much moisture is in the air, and it also has to have humidity. Now, I'm going to read a story. I've got to get this better. I'm going to read a story now about chickens, and I'm going to give you more information about chickens. We're going to learn so much about chickens and other animals. It's just going to be so amazing in these next couple weeks. All right. Are you ready? Life cycles chickens. <gasps> Another table of contents. We're only going to go to page 10 on this book too. Here we go. It says, 
Useful birds. Chickens are some of the world's most common birds. Like other birds, they have beaks, feathers, and wings. Even with wings, most chickens cannot fly. Did you hear that? Instead, their wings act like booster rockets as they run across the ground and they can jump over a fence. So it doesn't help them get really high in the air. It just propels them like a rocket to go a little burst of a way. Now it says here, domestic chickens live all over the world except on Antarctica. Here's Antarctica down here. So chickens don't live down there. Chickens first became tame or domestic birds. That means they're like, it's not like having a pet, but like a, on a farm. At least 4,000 years ago in Southeast Asia, they developed from a kind of wild bird called the red jungle fowl. Wild red jungle fowl still live in Asia. So this is what they lo looked like. And that's what chickens descended from. They came from that kind of a chicken in Asia. All right, here we go. Farmers often feed, chicken, uh, feed their chickens kitchen scraps. Many chickens love juicy watermelon, rinds, and fresh corn cobs. Oh, I didn't know that. Farmers raise chickens for their meat and eggs. Small flocks often roam free. These chickens scratch in the dirt for seeds, grass, worms, insects, and berries. They also help control pests that could harm the farmer's crops. Large farm farms raise thousands of chickens at once. You're going to see that in the Reading Rainbow video today. You are going to see that. Chickens on large farms grow in pens and eat special feed made of grains and vitamins. So this is the inside of a, like a big chicken coop that a farmer who raises only chickens might have. And that's a really lot of chickens in that. And that's what you'll see in Reading Rainbow today. And they'll even tell you one more thing. They'll tell you the temperature of, an incub of the incubators. So I need you to remember that temperature and maybe some of you should put it a voice message on CESA for me so I remember the temperature that I need to keep the incubator at. All right. A Dutch batum, bantam has a big red comb on top of its head. Over the years, people have developed many kinds of chickens. Different breeds, that means different kinds of chickens, have differences in size, color, types of feathers, and comb shape. Many people enjoy showing their chickens at fairs and chicken shows, just like a dog show or a cat show. They win ribbons and the honor of owning the best chicken of its breed. Still others enjoy pick chickens as pets. Now, Brooks has chickens at his house. I wonder if he considers them pets or to be farm animals that he uses to get eggs. We're going to have to ask Brooks that. Some breeds have fine silken feathers like the silky bantam. Did you know more than 280 million chickens live in the United States? 280 million. That's amazing. All right, that's where I'm going to stop. Well, we learned more information about chickens today. We got our incubator. The eggs come tomorrow. I will film a small snippet because Saturdays we don't go to school, but I'll film a small snippet of when I'm putting the eggs into the incubator, and then I'll show you how the humidity is, and I'll show you how the temperature is. This is very exciting times in kindergarten. All right, boys and girls, have a wonderful day. Don't forget to watch Reading Rainbow, and remember to look for the temperature. You had a lot of fun activities to do today. So um, enjoy and send your responses to me so I can see your pigeon and what you built with your shapes. All right, have a great day.